Hey everyone, I'm finally home and filming in Western Pennsylvania and it feels absolutely amazing. But let's get right to it. The reason I purposely call this webcast Let's Talk is because that's what I wanna do. I wanna talk with you, I wanna have a conversation, a back and forth. So in that vein, I'm going to at least partially answer, and I say partially due to time, an avid viewer's question. Janice Trock asked me, how do I find God's flashlight? That question is in reference to the last video called God's Technique that if you haven't watched, please turn uh, to that video and watch it. It's a great question, Janice. In a letter written by Luke in the 10th chapter, we see what the Bible has to say about that question. Right in that area, we find that large crowds of hardworking people, a lot like the people in this area, those people would easily understand and associate with raising sheep. So Jesus uses a metaphor that they would get, a shepherd and his sheep. Today, Jesus might use a dog and its owner. He responded to the question from the crowd, are you the Messiah? Jesus says to them, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work that I do in my father's name, but you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. You see, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they know me. So in this very quick retort, Jesus gives us a lot to understand. But for now, I just want to simply talk about his leading. So here are some highlights. First, we see Jesus had apparently claimed to be God the Messiah before this moment when he starts with, I've already told you. So he's simply really reaffirming his previous statements, announcing that he is indeed God the Messiah. Second point, he points out to them that he has already provided more than enough physical evidence of his claim to be God the Messiah when he said, the proof is the work I do. He's speaking about untold numbers of healings and various other miracles that he did in front of hundreds and thousands of people. As I've said before, Christian faith is not blind faith, that's a thing of the cults. If you're checking your brains at the door of your churches, you're being a fool on your own not because the Bible God asks you or wants you to. You're doing that on your own. Christian faith is based on empirical, tangible, reviewable evidence. We don't see everything. We don't see everything that the Bible talks about, like heaven, hell, angels, and other really cool things. But based on what he has already provided, we can know that those unseen things are also true. There's a third thing that we can see from Jesus' comment, and that is that many people do not and they will not believe the evidence that Jesus provides. He provides it to them, to us, to everyone. His voice is just another voice in the crowd to be evaluated and then either followed or not. He's talking about those who haven't accepted him as their savior, but unfortunately we see this even among Christians. People who follow him, they follow that same paradigm. And that is they evaluate God's leading, put it on, putting it on their scales, making a mental list of the positives and the negatives of what God is leading them to do, and then making a decision on what to do based on their limited knowledge instead of God's leading. So to find God's flashlight leading, here's what I would say. First, you have to accept that Jesus' evidence is real, that he is the Messiah, our Savior, that he was killed, buried, and was brought back to life to signify that God the Father accepted Jesus' real payment for our real sins or our shortfalls of perfection. My next suggestion for that is to study. Study how he has worked in the past by reading, examining the Bible, God's written letter to all of humankind. Listen to those who have walked with God for many, many years. And listen for his voice, because he is leading us, but it's like with a, a quiet strength that the world was going, is going to try and drown out. And one way that it tries to drown that out is to convince you, to convince me, to try and convince everybody that God doesn't even exist. Listen. I believe that you instinctively know that we did not come from nothing. Look around you. I mean, truly, seriously, look around you. You know that's not possible. Ultimately, some would have you believe a dry rock floating in space, a rock, use your intellect and consider that proposition. I don't care how long an empty and dry rock sits, no life will ever come from it. We have to leap way outside the realm of logic, recognize scientific laws, and known, known, repeatable, and verifiable historical evidence to think otherwise. It's this simple. Everything comes from something, and nothing comes from nothing. Just look at your bank account to prove that scientific law. Here's my closing thought on God's leading. It's not that believers have to look for his flashlight leading. It's that we have to stop looking at ours. 
and then his will become obvious. In other words, I believe we have to humble ourselves and recognize that God is God.